Hey guys, Forks here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at is the Xbox I repaired in a previous video. It's the one where I replaced the drive belt. Now in this video, I'll be modifying it. I'm gonna install a mod chip and I'm gonna put a bigger hard drive in it. Now this video is not gonna be a guide or a how-to. Um, I'm pretty much just gonna go through it. And the reason for that is because it's been a long time since I've modded an Xbox and I'm a little bit rusty and I don't want to tell you to do something and I give you the wrong information so I'm just going to do the mod on this so yeah if you give me five minutes to set up I'll crack on with it I just want to talk you through the new components I'm going to be installing in the Xbox the first and most important thing is the mod chip this is an Aladdin XT Plus 2 now you may be asking where can I get this mod chip from these are all over eBay. I paid £7 for this mod chip. The second thing I'm going to be installing is a large R drive. This is a 320 gigabyte SATA R drive. Now you may be going a SATA R drive in an Xbox. Um, this is where this little device comes in. This is a SATA to IDE adapter. So I can use SATA drive in the Xbox. And the last thing I'll be installing is an 80 pin IDE cable nice little upgrade to the 40 pin that's in the Xbox and these are the things I'll be installing into the Xbox okay it's dead easy to get into the Xbox all you need is a T20 bit and you need to remove six bolts there's one under this there's one under this there's one under this there's one under this there's one here under this label and there's another one under this label once you get those bolts out the lid will just come straight off as you can see I'm inside the Xbox what I need to do now is remove the R drive and the DVD-ROM drive now to do this I need a T10 bit and there's three screws I need to remove just under this IDE cable you can see there's one there if we look down there you can see there's one there and there's one just there as well okay once you remove this screw you should be able to remove the R drive but first you need to take the IDE cable out take the Molex power cable out now this is thread down here like this it's very easy to just do and pick it and once that's done it should just lift straight out like that okay I've removed the two screws holding the drive in what I need to do now is remove the old IE cable and the power cable just there and the drive should now just lift out yep okay I've removed the old IDE cable and the power for the DVD ROM drive what I need to do now is whip this motherboard out because I need to install the mod chip as you can see I have the Xbox motherboard out now the reason I didn't show you the screw locations on how to get the Xbox motherboard out was that really depends on the revision of your Xbox um, this is a revision 1.0 I can tell that because it has a fan on the GPU and so if you have a different revision it depends on where your screws are located on the board so if I was to tell you remove this screw, this screw, this screw, that wouldn't have helped you because <laughs> uh, you may have a different revision than me. So uh, what I need to do now is prepare my mod chip. So okay, this is the mod chip I'm going to install, the Aladdin XT Plus 2. And there's two methods to install this mod chip, depending on how you want the Xbox to start up. Uh, the first one is if you hold the power button for more than a second it will enable the mod chip anything less than a second will just boot the Xbox up stock now I don't really want that I want this mod chip to be enabled all the time so there's a little trick you can do if you look here where it says BT if you connect this pad to this pad here that permanently enables the mod chip so the moment you press the power button the mod chip kicks in 
uh, and that's what I'm going to do next just solder a little wire from this pad to this pad okay as you can see I've soldered the link wire between those two places that just permanently enables the chip so it's always on okay I have the Xbox motherboard back in front of me what I need to take care of now is the LPC port I need to solder in my pin header what I'm going to do is take a little bit of tape tape it across just to hold the header down I'll flip the board over and solder that in place as you can see the pin header is soldered into the LPC port I've also took the opportunity to wire in the DO signal I need for the chip that will go all the way to the other side of the board now you can get your DO signal from the top side of the board but you're soldering to a really tiny via um, it's better and easier just to get it from the underside of the board on a version 1 so yeah all I need to do now is put the chip on the pin header solder the DO wire to the chip and that's the mod chip installed here's my pin header take my mod chip make sure everything's lined up slide that on there that's that, I just need to solder this wire to that point there with solder on it and that's the mod chip installed ok, mod chip's installed, as you can see I've soldered the wire to the DO point it's on its pin header all I need to do now is put this motherboard back in the Xbox and we can fire it up and see if the chip starts if the chip boots up we can then move on to installing the larger R drive ok I have the motherboard back in the Xbox mod chips installed I've not put the drives the DVD ROM drive or the R drive back in there yet um, I don't want to be really doing that until I've tested the mod chip because the last thing I want to do is put everything back in the mod chip don't work and I've got to take everything back out again so I'm just going to test the mod chip now what I'm expecting to see is the system to boot and we'll get an Evo X logo in the top left corner so this is it, I'm going to power on the Xbox mod chip lights come on it's booting up and we do, we get the Evo X logo in the corner so that's a successful mod chip install Now this X Xbox should error out because obviously there's no drives connected to it. I'm just going to wait a few seconds. I want to see what the error code is. There we go. So I missed that. What was it? Error 7. <laughs> so if you've got no drive connected, you get error 7. Okay, what I want to do now is, is take care of a little problem that may occur later down the line with this Xbox if you look at this capacitor here that capacitor is a super capacitor and what that's there for is to hold the power for the clock circuit so the Xbox remembers the time and date now the problem with that capacitor is it leaks over time so if you store this Xbox away for a period of time that can leak and what can happen is is the electrolyte that's in the capacitor can get on the board and it starts to damage traces and pads and before you know it you've got a bigger repair that you need to take care of now I remove this super capacitor now the problem with that is it's going to make the Xbox forget the time and date but there is a workaround that you can do and I'll show you that later in the video so what I'm going to do now is just whip out that super capacitor okay the super capacitor is out what I did was just wiggled it out um, I think I got to it just in time because I can see little remnants of electrolyte on the board and it did smell a little bit fishy when I took it out so what I'm going to have to do now is take a Q-tip with some alcohol and get that area a good clean as you can see all nicely cleaned up I can store this Xbox away now for long periods 
and I don't have to worry about that super capacitor leaking and destroying traces. So what I need to do now is install the new R drive. Okay, I need to get the old R drive out of its caddy. Super easy to do, just need a T10 bit. There's two screws on that side and two screws on that side. Take those out and the R drive should pop out. Okay, as you can see, I have the new R drive in the old caddy. I have the SATA to ID adapter plugged in. All I need to do now is reassemble the Xbox and then we can get on to partition this R drive and installing a dash. So that's what's going to happen next. Okay, as you can see, I put everything back in the Xbox, wired in the brand new 80 pin IDE cable. I'm going to sort that out, make that nice and neat later on. But what I want to do now is power on and see what happens. Um, we should get a different error code this time because obviously we've got more things connected. And what will happen is the Xbox will try and access the original dash that's on the hard drive, but it won't be able to because obviously it's a brand new hard drive. So this Xbox should spit out a different error code. So what I'm going to do is power on. And I can hear the hard drive access. Yeah, you see how quick that was? What error code have we got this time? Error 13. So yeah, it looks like the Xbox was trying to access the hard drive but couldn't because obviously we're not set it up yet. So what I'm going to do now is set up my tripod and we'll get formatting this hard drive and partitioning it. I'm going to install a dashboard on it as well. Okay, I'm ready to partition this hard drive, install a dash on it. What I'm going to be using is the Hexen 2017 disc. So let's get on with this now. Installing the mod chip, I was okay, guys, not a problem. Um, this is where I'm a little bit rusty, so if I make a mistake, you know, I apologize in advance. Um, so let's get on with this. First thing I need to do is eject the drive and put in the Exxon disc. Now, if memory serves me, it should say that it's find a new hard drive. Do I want to format it? If I, if I can remember, I'm sure it, yeah, there you go. Unle unleash X has detected a new hard drive. Do you want to format your new hard drive? Press both triggers and start button to continue. So triggers and start. Warning, all data on a non-removable disk will be lost. Press both triggers and start. Format and see. Yep, there we go. Do you have an F drive? Press both triggers and start button to format it. Both triggers and back to skip. Now I do have an F drive, so I want to do that. One each X has finished preparing your new drive. Press both triggers to start to continue. Okay, Xbox version 1.0. Told you it was 1.0. <laughs> so as you can see, we've got C, E, F, and we don't have anything on G yet because we've not formatted it so I need to go to I think it's number three yep that's the one number so it's three five chip flash Xbox disk upgrade new disk pal Xbox Okay guys, I'm ready to partition and format this hard drive for G and F drives. If we look down the bottom, we can see I've got around about 300 gigabytes of space. That's about right for a 320 gigabyte hard drive. 
Now if we look on the left here we can see 6 and we can see 7. 6 is the F drive, 7 is the G drive. Now if I cycle through what partitions I can have by pressing the A button, I can have 440, sorry, 145 gigabytes on F and 145 gigabytes on G. I can just go for a standard 120 gigabytes on F. I can go for a massive F drive at 290 gigabytes. But what I like to do is I like to set it up like this where I have 120 on F and the rest on G. And the reason I like that is because I can copy my games that I definitely want to keep. I'm never going to get rid of. I can copy them over to the F drive. And what I can do then is use the G drive for games like mm, I might play it, I might not like it, I might get rid of it. I might play it, you never know. I might really like it, it'll get bumped up to the to the F drive. But F drive is do not touch this drive. And G drive is, well, I can do what I want with it. So what I'm going to do now is partition those for those sizes 120 170 and then after that we'll reboot and we should be into the dash so i'm just going to do that now so i'm going to press start and why is that one done i'm going to do the same for the g drive and that should be it. And what I can do is back out of that and reboot Exxon. Okay, now I've booted back into Exxon, and as you can see, if we look on our F drive, I have 123 gigabytes, and on the G drive, I have 174 gigabytes. Like I mentioned before, F drive is the one where I'm going to store the games that I never want to touch. Do not touch my F drive otherwise I will flip out <laughs> and G drive is the drive I'm going to use just to store Xbox games maybe they'll stay on there maybe they won't so what I'm going to do now is take the X and disk out the drive reboot the Xbox and see if we boot into a dash okay moment of truth guys time to test this uh, everything's been formatted partitioned we're ready to go what I'm expecting is when I power this system on, because there's no DVD ROM in there now, it should boot from the hard drive and it should boot Unleash X dashboard. So let's power the system on. As you can see, we're booting. And there we go, Unleash X dashboard with the correct partition sizes. Now, I have to admit, guys, I'm quite impressed with this IDE to SATA adapter. I thought I might have problems with it. No, it worked perfectly first time. So, what I'm going to do now is whip the lid back on this. Well, I'm kneading the cables out first, then whip the lid back on. Then, what I'm going to do is start the painful process of FTP and games over to this and emulators. Okay, what you're looking at is my original Xbox. What I'm doing at the moment is I've connected the Xbox to my network and what I'm doing is I'm copying over the C partition, the E partition, the F partition and the G partition from this Xbox I'm copying that over using Flash FXP. That's going to get copied over to my R drive. Once it's finished doing that, I'm going to hook up the new Xbox and I'm going to copy those partitions over to the new Xbox. And what that will do is it will clone this one. And it's going to take a long time. <laughs> okay, as you can see, I have the Evo X dashboard, that's the dashboard I use, I quite like it, it looks quite nice, it's very easy to use. 
Um, the way I did that was I cloned the C and the E drive from my other Xbox and copied it over to this Xbox and because the C and the E are your uh, dashboard and your saves and everything um, it copied it over okay now what I'm doing now is copying the games from the F and the G drives from the other Xbox I cloned you can see the, the F drive size shooting down real quick um, I'm using the same thing I did before I'm just FDP in the games that were on the old Xbox over to this new one and it's going to take a hell of a long time to do it now if you remember I removed the super capacitor which was what was powering the clock circuit so when you powered off the Xbox it remembered the time and date now because we moved that remove that supercapacitor it no longer remembers time and date as you can see that's what the xbox thinks the time and date is unless i'm a time traveler that's wrong <laughs> now what we can do because we're running a custom dashboard now is we can tell this dashboard every time you start up i want you to connect to the internet i want you to connect to a server and get the time and date for us and that's what I'm going to do now and that's the workaround I'm just going to go into my settings and I'm just going to enter the server address there it is now you should be able to find an SNTP server from the region you're in um, I mean obviously in the UK so I'm, I've got a UK one if you're in the States you can get them pretty much from any time zone in the world the easiest way to do this is just type in your country and then type in SNTP server and you should it should pop up with a, a, a load of them now what I'm going to do is just going to enter mine now I'm going to have to put the camera down to enter it because it's going to be a bit tricky to hold the camera and enter this at the same time okay as you can see I've finished entering the web address for my SNTP server what I'm going to do now is just go to done I'm going to go down to save and exit and that's that now what should happen now is every time I power on the Xbox as long as I have a network cable and it's connected to the internet this dashboard should connect to that SNTP server and pick up the time and date so what I'm going to do now is power off the Xbox to give it a test I'm going to power on the Xbox again and hopefully it should go and get the correct time and date And as you can see, we now have the correct time and date. So there you go guys, that's the uh, workaround if you remove the supercapacitor. Okay, I'm done. Took a full day to copy the games over. But as you can see, F drive is pretty much rammed full. Got 1.1 gigabyte left and on G drive I've got 71 gigabytes left which is mm, more than enough to put some extra games on this if, if the person I'm going to give this Xbox to wants to put games on so yeah I'm going to explain that now guys this Xbox is not for me um, it's my friend's birthday coming up soon and he's never owned an original Xbox and I was sitting there the other day and was like what can I get my friend and I was searching on eBay and I saw this Xbox going cheap because it had that faulty sticky drive I was like you know what I can get that I can fix it for him I can modify it put a bigger hard drive in it and then he'll have an original Xbox now the reason I couldn't tell you that is because obviously it was time sensitive by the time this video goes out his birthday would have been and gone so uh, 
yeah if you're watching this video mark I hope you enjoy this Xbox bud now what I'm going to do now is show you what's on this Xbox and I've kept it really simple because you know this is the first ever Xbox he's ever had so he doesn't really know um, what to do and how to use it properly so I've kept everything simple now I put DVD to Xbox on there that's if he wants to you know bung a game in his drive and copy it over to the Xbox video mode switcher that allows him to switch between PAL and NTSC so if he's got a game and it's it's forcing PAL he can force it into NTSC Xbox Media Center you've got to have Xbox Media Center and XOR Trainer Launcher allows you to uh, cheat on your games now for emulation what I put on there same again I've kept it really simple I've got a NES emulator Final Burn Legends which is a arcade emulator Neo Genesis which is uh, a Mega Drive Genesis emulator SMS Plus which is a Master System and Z SNES which is a SNES emulator now if we go down to games I'm not going to go through all the games what I'll do is I'll just run through them quickly so you can see what they are I got about 80 of them on here guys scroll back up So yeah, that's it guys. This video is done. Hope you liked it. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Conkers having a little rave. <laughs> Love this game so much. <laughs>